This is your video for exponents, perfect squares, and square roots. It covers pages 43 through 48 in your notebook. You'll need a pencil, as well as yellow and pink colors. For those yellow and pink colors, you can use highlighters, colored pencils, crayons, or markers. Remember to copy everything from this video into your notes. Write down any questions that you have while watching this video. Bring them to class so we can answer them together. Numbers that you can multiply together to get another number. Now, this is an example of a factor. So, if you have the number 2 times 4 to give you 8, the two numbers that you multiplied together to give you that 8, 2 and 4, are your factors. So, the 2 and 4 are the factors in this multiplication sentence. A factor that's being repeated in the multiplication sentence. So in this multiplication sentence, the 2 is being repeated, and this is the base. So this 2 is the base, or the number that we're actually multiplying by repeatedly. The number that tells you how many times the factor repeats in a multiplication sentence. So here we're repeating the 2 three times, and we get that 3, and that 3 is our exponent. So the exponent is this little number here that tells us that we're going to multiply the base three times. So we're going to write it three times and multiply it out. And this is our exponent. So the 3 that's really small at the top of that number is the exponent. A number that is written with an exponent or the answer to a repeated multiplication sentence. So 2 to the third power over here is expanded out 2 times 2 times 2, which gives me 8. So 2 to the third and 8 are both called powers. So we can write it in exponential form. And 2 to the third is the power in exponential form. And we also have 8. This is our power in standard form. So 2 to the third equals 8. So those are both of our powers. The entire multiplication sentence written out without an exponent. So we are going to expand this 2 and keep writing that 2. And this is going to be in expanded form. So we look at the base to see what number we are going to expand, and we expand it the number of times that's designated by our exponent. The product of a whole number times itself. It can be represented by the area of a square. So here I have 9, and I have 3, 6, 9 boxes, so the area of this square is 9. If I take 3 and square it, or 3 times 3, to give me 9, this is an example of a perfect square. Now, I could take any square and find a perfect square. So if I took a square that was 5 by 5, 5 times 5 is 25, and the area of that square would be 25. So 25 would be another example of a perfect square. The whole number length of the side of a square, or the base of a number that can be raised to the second power. So in that original square, the sides of that square are 3. And if I take 3 times 3, it would give me that area of 9. So 3 is the square, the square's root. So the square root of that 9 would give me 3. Now, if we look back at the perfect square, you can find any perfect square by taking a number and squaring it. And that will give me a perfect square. So if I took that 5 and squared it, I could say 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 is a perfect square. If you want to find the root of a perfect square, you would have to use a square root. And the symbol for square root is this radical symbol. So if I took the square root 
of a number, it would give me the square's root, or the root. Now, if it's a perfect square, then my root is going to be a nice whole number. A number taken to the second power. So here, 3 to the second power is 3 times 3, or equal to 9. Another word for this is squared. So we can say that 3 squared equals 3 times 3, which gives me 9. A number taken to the third power. So if I take 5 to the third power, I do 5 times 5 times 5, which gives me 125. So another word for raising something to the third power is we can say that I cubed the 5. So 5 cubed is equal to 125. On this next page, you should follow along and fill in the multiplication chart. You can count by a number to fill in each row. First, we're going to count by ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. For the next row, we're going to count by twos. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. For the next row, we'll count by threes. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36. We'll count by fours for this row. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48. Next row we'll be counting by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Next row we'll count by sixes. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60, 66, 72. The next row we'll count by sevens. 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, 63, 70, 77, and 84. The next row will count by eights. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, 80, 88, and 96. The next row will count by nines. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, 90, 99, 108. Our next row will count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. For our next row, we'll count by 11s. 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99, 110, 121, 132. If we count by 12s, we can get 
twelve, twenty-four, thirty-six, forty-eight, sixty, seventy-two, eighty-four, ninety-six, one hundred and eight, one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty-two, one hundred and forty-four. You should have all of these 12 diagonal numbers memorized, but the next one, 13 times 13, there's a cool little way to remember it. And the next one's going to be in the 100s. If you double the 3, you get 6, and if you triple the 3, you get 9. That's not any math, but it helps you remember it. The next one is going to be the 14th perfect square. So for the 14th, the next one's going to be in the 100s as well, and we just flip the 6 and 9 around, and we get 196. So 14 times 14 is 196. For 15, we have two fives here. So I have two fives multiplied together will give me 25. So 15 times 15 is 225. For 16, 16 is the next one. So the last one ended with 25. So we can start the first one with that. But this has sixes, so the last number here is going to be a six. So 16 times 16 is 256. 17 is going to be in the 200s as well, so we're going to bring that two down. And I know that eight plus nine gives me 17, so 17 times 17 is 289. With 18, I know that this next number here is going to be in the 300s. So I'm going to put a 3 here, and the 3 times this 8 is going to give me 24. So 18 squared is 324. The next one's going to be in the 300s as well, so we're going to put a 3 there. And if I take the 3, I, I know that 3 plus 6 gives me that 9, and this 1 is going to be tacked on the end. So 19 times 19 is 361. 2 times 2 is 4, and 20 times 20 is 400. So that, should, that last one should be a very easy one for you to remember as well. So you need to remember all of these numbers along the diagonal. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, 225, 256, 289, 324, 361, and 400. So the numbers along the diagonal are called something special. And you need to remember how to get to those numbers too. So 7 times 7 gives me 49. So you need to know that the seventh one of these numbers is 49. The eleventh is 121. What do you notice about the numbers on the diagonal of the multiplication chart? These are the ones that we colored in yellow. You might notice that these numbers alternate going odd, even, odd, even and continuing in that manner. You might also notice that all of these numbers on the diagonal are products of a number that, uh, or numbers that are squared or multiplied by themselves. What do you notice about the pattern of diagonal numbers? You might notice that they are getting bigger or bigger or these numbers are increasing in value. You might also notice that they're increasing by bigger and bigger odd numbers. So 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 5 gives you 9. 9 plus 7 gives you 16. 16 plus 9 gives you 25. So on and so forth. What are the numbers on the diagonal of the multiplication chart called? Now, we squared numbers to get to these, or multiplied them by themselves, so all the numbers that are highlighted yellow are perfect squares. What are the numbers on the outside of the chart called? Well, these are the square roots, or the numbers that we began with, or started with. So if we take one of the roots and square it, we'll get a perfect square. The smallest square we can make is a 1 by 1 square. 
So we draw a 1 by 1 square, and this one side by the other one side. We can square it, and 1 squared gives us an area of 1. So 1 is our perfect square. So if we highlight this yellow, our area is 1, and we can highlight the area of that square, and this 1 is our perfect square. So if we take the square root of this 1, we'll get a root of 1. Now in this case, this 1 is the root as well. So the 1 that's the root is the 1 that is on the side of the square. And if we take that side square and square it, we get back to our perfect square of 1. Our next biggest square is going to be a 2 by 2 square. So we draw a 2 by 2 square. And a side of 2 times a side of 2 would give me 2 squared, or an area of 4, because there are 4 boxes that cover this square. So our perfect square is 4. So if we color this perfect square of 4 and cover this area in yellow, we see that this 4 is our perfect square. If we take the square root, of 4 will get 2. So we're back to the side. So the square root is going to be pink and this 2 that represents the side of the square is our square root. And if we take that 2 and we square it, we're back to our perfect square of 4. The next biggest square that we can make is a 3 by 3 square or the side of size 3 which is going to be the root. So we have our 3 by 3 square, and 3 times 3, or 3 squared, is going to give me an area of 9, and that is our perfect square. So my area or perfect square of 9 can be seen by the 9 boxes that cover this square. So this is the area or the actual perfect square. So this is my perfect square. And if I take the square root of that 9, I would get 3. So 3 is the root of this square. So the sides, or the length of the sides, are the root in the situation. And if I square that root, then I can get back to my perfect square of 9. The next biggest square that I can make is 4 by 4. So I'm going to draw a 4 by 4 square. And I have 16 boxes that cover that entire square. So my 4 by 4 square, a side of 4 times a side of 4, or 4 squared, is going to give me an area of 16. And that 16 is my perfect square. So the 16 that's my perfect square is shown by this area that we're coloring in yellow. So this perfect square, if I take it and I take the square root of it, I would get 4. So 4 is my root. Now my root is the length of the side on each of those squares. So if I take my root of 4 and square it, I can get back to my perfect square, or 6. The next biggest square that I can draw is a 5 by 5 square. So this is going to take up the whole grid that we have here. And my 5 by 5 square is going to have 25 boxes inside of it. So a 5 by 5 square, or 5 squared, would give me an area of 25. And that is my perfect square. So if we color in my perfect square yellow, I'm covering up this entire square of 25 boxes. So this 25 is my perfect square. And if I take the square root of this 25, I will get a 5, and that is my root. So the root, or the square root, is how big the side of that square is. And if I take that 5 and I square it again, I can get back to my perfect square of 25. Now the roots are what we start with to get the perfect squares. So if I square the root, I get the perfect square of 1. And if I take the square root of the perfect square, I'll get the root. So the square root of 1 
would give me the 1 back to the root. So a root of 2 squared would give me a perfect square of 4, and the perfect square of 4 taken the square root would give me back to 2. 3 squared would give me 9, but the square root of 9 would give me back to the root of 3. 4 squared would give me the perfect square of 16, but the square root of 16 would give me back to the root of 4. 5 squared would give me the perfect square of 25, but the square root of 25 would get me back to the root of 5. Starting with our root of 6, we can square it to get our perfect square of 36. And taking the square root of 36 gets us back to our root of 6. Squaring our 7 would make a perfect square of 49, but taking the square root of 49 gets us back to our root of 7. Squaring 8 gets us a perfect square of 64, but taking the square root of 64 gets us back to 8. Squaring 9 would get us to our perfect square of 81, but taking the square root of 81 would get back to our root of 9. Squaring 10 gives us a perfect square of 100, but taking the square root of 100 gets us back to our root of 10. Starting with the root of 11, if we square 11, we'll get our perfect square of 121, and taking the square root of 121 will get us back to our root of 11. Squaring 12 would get us to the 12th perfect square of 144, and taking the square root of 144 will get us back to our root of 12. Squaring 13 would get us to the perfect square of 169, and taking the square root of 169 will get us back to 13. Squaring 14 would get us to our perfect square of 196, and taking the square root of 196 would get us back to our root of 14. Squaring 15 would give us the perfect square 225, but taking the square root of 225 would get us back to our root of 15. Squaring 16 will get us our 16th perfect square of 256, and taking the square root of 256 would get us back to our root of 16. Squaring 17 would get us our perfect square of 289, but taking the square root of 289 would get us back to our root of 17. Squaring 18 will get us to our 18th perfect square, or 324, and taking the square root of 324 would get us back to our root of 18. Squaring 19 will get us to 361, and the square root of 361 would get us back to our root of 19. Squaring 20 will get us to our perfect square of 400, and taking the square root of 400 gets us back to our root of 20. When we are evaluating exponents, we need to remember to expand the exponents and multiply. So whenever you see an exponent, you need to remember to expand. Let's get the zero power first, and two to the first power means that I'm gonna write one, two. Two to the second power means that I'm gonna write two twice. Two to the third power means that I'm gonna write two three times. Two to the fourth power means that I'm going to write two four times. Two to the fifth power means that I'll write that two five times. And two to the sixth power means that I'll write that two six times. Two to the seventh power means that I will write that two seven times. Now let's try to actually evaluate. This 2 is equal to 2, and 2 times 2 would give me 4. 2 times 2 gives me 4, times another 2 gives me 8. So 2 times 2 gives me the 8, times another 2 would give me 16. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives me 16, times another 2 would give me 32. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 gives me 32, times another 2 would give me 64. 
two times two times two times two times two times two would give me 64, but times another two would give me 128. So as I'm going down the list, I'm multiplying by an extra two. So eight times two is 16, times two is 32, times two times two. If I go the other direction, I would be dividing by two. So 32 divided by two is 16. 16 divided by two is eight. Eight divided by two is four. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and this 2 divided by 2 would give me 1. So because of that pattern, 2 to the 0 power is actually equal to 1, and that's how we write it in expanded form. So if I write it 0 times, my multiplicative identity is 1. Now, everything on the left side is actually written in exponential form. So if I'm writing that with an exponent, it is in exponential form. So let's highlight that column on the left and label that in uh, as being an exponential form. And it's written with an exponent. That's how we remember that it's called exponential form. Now all of these numbers are written in the standard way that you normally see a number. So all of these pink numbers are in standard form. Now all of these numbers that we expanded or wrote out really long, all of these numbers are written in expanded form. Which of the following is equivalent to 2 to the third power? Now 2 is our base and this is going to be the B or big number that we are going to be repeating. So here I don't have a 2, I have all 2's, and here I don't have 2, so F and J are out because those bases are not correct. Now 3 is my exponent. And an exponent of 3 means that I'm going to write this 2 three times. So looking at g, I wrote it 1, I wrote it 1, 2, 3, 4 times, so g is out. But h, I wrote it three times, so h is equivalent to 2 to the third power. What expression does not equal 16. So we're looking for something that does not equal 16. So 2 to the 4th power, I'm going to write that 2. 1, 2, 3, 4 times. And 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. So this does actually equal 16. Here we have 4 times 4. I'm writing it 2 times, and 4 times 4 is 16 as well. So B is equal to 16. 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8, times another 2 is 16. So C is equal to 16 as well. Now 4 to the 4th power is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, and 4 times 4 is 16, and this 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 16 is actually equal to 256. So D is not equal to 16, and this is the one that we are looking for because we're looking for the one that is not equal to 16. So answer choice D is the best choice. For number 3, we're looking for 14 to the third power. So we have 14 is our base, and this is going to be the big number that we are going to repeat. And you can remember that because they both start with B. So this is the big number, and we've got 14. We're repeating 14 here, and here we're not quite repeating 14, so J's out. And this should be repeated three times because my exponent is 3. So if I'm looking at G and H, I see that that 14 is each written three times. But we need to remember that exponents mean that we have repeated multiplication. 
not addition. So G is out because that has addition symbols. Now, if I have 14 to the third power, this is in expanded form, but I don't know if this is the standard form. So 14 times 14 is uh, 196, which is way bigger than 143. So I know that this is not equal to 14 to the third power. So F is not correct, but H is the best choice. So based on the geometric pattern shown, what is the value of 4 to the 6? Well, we need to kind of extend this pattern, and 4 to the 4th will go to 4 to the 5th when I multiply by another 4, and 4 to the 5th will go to 4 to the 6th when I multiply by another 4. So I'll start with 4 to the 4th, or 256 in standard form, and multiply by 4. So 6 times 4 is 24, carry the 2, bring down the 4. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2 is 22. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2 is 10. So 4 to the 5th power is actually equal to 1,024. Now if I multiply by another 4, 4 to the 4 is 16, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, 4 times 0 is 0, and 4 times 1 is 4. So this is 4,096, and that should be equal to 4 to the 6th power. And that is going to be the choice that we choose, which I see as answer choice J. So J is equal to 4 to the 6th power. 3 squared, we have 3 is the base and 2 is the exponent. And going from exponential form to factor form, we're going to write that 3 2 times, and 3 times 3 is 9. So we evaluated that to standard form. 5 to the third power is written this way in exponential form. And we have 5 times 5 times 5. And that 5 times 5 is 25 times another 5 would give us 125. So we evaluated it to standard form of 125. We have a bunch of 2's and we have these 2's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So my exponent is 5 and 2 to the 5th power. Uh, when we evaluate that, 2 times 2 is 4 and that 4 times 4 is 16 times this last 2 would give us 32. Make sure we use all of those 2's and 32 is in standard form. Now, if we, ha if we know our base is 3, then we want to know how many 3's would we multiply together to give me 9. Well, 3 times 3 actually gives me 9, so I have 2 of those, and I know that 3 squared would give me 9. 10 here is our exponent, uh, 10 here is our base, and 4 is our exponent. So we're going to write that 10 4 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 times 10 is 100, and 100 times 100 is going to give us 10,000. So 10,000 is 10 to the 4th in standard form, or evaluated to standard form. 6 to the 0 power, well, I'm going to write a 1 there, because we need to remember that to the 0 power will al always give us 1. That's a rule we need to remember. Now if I do 4 times 4, I will get a 16, and if I multiply by another 4, I'll end up getting 64. So if I do four, uh, 3 4s, or 4 to the 3rd power, that would give me that 64 in standard form. If I'm trying to get multiply by 2s to get to 32, I know 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 times 4 is going to give us 16, so I know that I'm going to need two more 2's up there to give us that 4, and 16 times another 2 would give us 32. So I got to 32 in standard form by multiplying by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 2's. So 2 to the 5th power is equal to 32. Now if I want to start with 9 and get to 1, I need to raise it to the 0 power, because that rule will always make any base, so any base raised to the 0 power will always give me 1. That is definitely a rule that we just have to remember, or kind of think about that pattern I showed you earlier. So here we have a bunch of 6's, and we have it 3 times, so 6 to the 3rd power is how we write it in exponential form. 
and 6 times 6 is 36, and 36 times another 6 would actually give us 216. So 216 is that in standard form. This next one, we're going to write the 8 twice, and 8 times 8 is 64. And 8 squared is how we write it in exponential form. You should have 100% of your notes completed now. Write down any questions that you had while watching this video.